President Bola Tinubu has until July 28 to send his ministerial nominees to the Senate for screening and confirmation that is going by the Nigerian Constitution. The Constitution, following amendments by the last parliament, states that the president and governors have a 60-day window within which to appoint ministers and commissioners from the date they were sworn in. Section 42 of the Constitution states that Quote, the nomination of any person to the office of a minister for confirmation by the Senate shall be done within 60 days after the date the president has taken the oath of office. Now, not less than 10% of persons appointed as ministers shall be women, provided that the president may appoint a minister at any other time during his tenure, such as uh, such as appointment shall be subject to confirmation by the Senate. Uh, the document also provides that the president shall appoint at least a minister from each of the 36 states of the federation. This means President Tinubu has uh, just two days to present his cabinet. Nigerians are watching with expectant eyes for who will make the president list as the administration isn't complete without his cabinet. Nigerians want to see the president list, hoping it will be filled with problem solvers. Now this is where I bring my guest analyst here with me today, journalist and political affairs commentator and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoko. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Good we to all, see you too. We are waiting for President Tinubu's list. Uh, everyone is waiting for that list. But before then, let's uh, go back and talk about what's trending. Still very much in the news. Uh, we saw the videos. Um, of uh, the DSS and uh, members of staff of the Nigerian Correctional Service in a free-for-all there in the court premises all uh, for one man, Nigeria's uh, central bank chief uh, who's on suspension at the moment. Speak to us. Now, I want you to put on your journalist cap and also your analytical mind to look at what you saw. I mean, look at it. Uh, what does this first mean to our democracy in a case where uh, a judge, the law court, has granted a Nigerian bail? Well, as the lawyer uh, said, the guest that you had earlier, what we saw, what yeah, what we saw earlier um, in the court is a form of brigandage and recklessness being exhibited by the DSS against the state. DSS works for the state, right? And so the laws that guide its operations, it is the one that is flouting it. And so people are shocked. Well, I'm not really shocked. These kind of things have been happening in Nigeria for some time, aided and abetted by the executive arm of government. Um, speaking about MFLA specifically, there are two ways to look at what just happened. There is what the law says, and then there is the public court. Um, so the opinion of people, what people are saying, um, it's a trending story like you mentioned, what are people saying? And so let's start with the public court. Um, there is little or no sympathy for the suspended CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele. Why is that so? Um, when he was at the helm, he, he took a lot of de decisions that were controversial. And uh, some would say that he went as far as impugning the integrity of the organization that he worked for and sort of also rubbishing its reputation. Um, of course, he had the solid support of the president and the inner caucus of the presidency. And that's why he was able to survive almost two terms and he was able to do a lot of the things he did. In this the, case, you're talking about President Buhari. Yes. Former President Buhari. Of course, there is the view that he had the option of resigning if he felt that he was being asked to do what was wrong of him as an uh, independent CBN. Well, he didn't resign. He continued to tow the path that the president wanted him to tow. And so here, you know, we have it. And so what he did, I think the icing on the cake was when he decided to run for presidency without resigning his position. Who does that? What CBN governor in the world does that kind of thing? 
And so when you sort of look at it from that context, people would sort of laugh at him and say, yes, you deserve what you're going through. And then let's go to what the law says. In spite of all of that, any country guided by law should fight to protect the fundamental principles of justice and human rights. He is still an individual that's, that has rights. That means that he cannot be detained arbitrarily for longer periods of time, except, of course, in exceptional circumstances where the person is a, a national security threat. I don't think that is the case here. So a country that abides by the law should definitely charge him. He has been charged, and then he's been rearrested again. So as the lawyer said, that is very wrong. He has been given bail in the sum of 20 million naira. Therefore, he should perfect his bail and then be released on bail. If you think he is a flight risk, then seize his passport. There is also another angle to all of this. In Nigeria, we are so used to media trial. So there is the hype, the noise, we're going to deal with this person. And then at the end of the day, after a while, everything disappears. The person goes quietly to somewhere and enjoys his life. And what you find is that there is usually insufficient evidence to nail the person. So if the DSS wants to follow the law, you have to come up with sufficient evidence, give the person a chance to also counter and challenge the accusations by presenting his own evidence and then pursue the case to logical conclusion. You know, my conversation with Obed Agu, the lawyer, you know, also moved into an arena of, uh, you know, perhaps uh, giving the DSS the benefit of the doubt. Uh, in this case, perhaps uh, maybe the team at the court where some, you know, team of, of overzealous security agents. So this is some hours since that very ugly incident. Now speak to us by now, should we or shouldn't we be getting a, a formal release uh, from the Department of State Security, the DSS, telling Nigerians what truly went down, if, they, they, if that uh, actually got their stamp? Well, you're speaking to that if it was normal circumstances. I think so many years of military rule in this country has, uh, you know, or provokes certain actions by um, government agencies, especially the security forces. Um, they are not above the law. And if we want to be a country that is not lawless, in most cases they behave as if they are lawless and it's as if they are law unto themselves. Again, this falls on the executive arm of government. The kind of powers you allow this to exhibit, because in the past what we have seen is that it is the president that gives these people the leeway to abuse power and do what they do. A president that wants to abide by the rule of law should do the right thing and call them to order. And as the lawyer said, there are different arms of government. There is the executive, there is the judiciary. The judiciary has been so abused in this country, especially in the last eight years, really destroyed you know, as a body. And that should not be the case. So we're looking to the new president to see that perhaps there will be a change in the way that the executive arm of government treats the judiciary. It is an independent arm of government and should be allowed to do its job. You know, President Tinubu is uh, a well-known fighter, a dogged fighter of, uh, you know, our democracy, someone who you could easily call a defender of our democracy. And this is happening, you know, at the start of his administration. Now you're talking about the president. What else would you love to have seen? Uh, you know, in the next couple of, you know, hours from the presidency uh, concerning uh, this uh, that has been a big shock to Nigerians. So I, I like that the uh, lawyer mentioned an incident in Lagos. I think it was between the DSS and another security the agency. EFCC. Yeah, the EFCC. And uh, so the, the anti-corruption agency, there was a scuffle and uh, the president uh, came out forcefully and asked one of them to back off. This is what should happen. However, he also mentioned that there might be 
um, some political reasons or even personal reasons why a Mefiele is being held. So if there are no political or personal reasons why he's being held, then he allow due process to follow in spite of whatever are the allegations or accusations against him. That is what people are expecting to see from the president. Call whoever needs to be called to order right away. Now, let's uh, still about the man of the moment, uh, not a Mifile, uh, <laughs> President Tinubu. And everyone is waiting for the list. Oh, the list is there. The list is not there. Oh, the list you see is not a list from the president. Oh, the list has been submitted. Oh, the list has been withdrawn. And now the clock ticks and is almost getting to the 24th hour. Now, help us make sense of what exactly this could mean in the next uh, 48 hours for the presidency and the president in particular. You know, because of President Muhammad Buhari, the law had to change. You know, it took him six months to present his ministers, and everybody was like, no, 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 we're not having this again. So as you read out, it, in, within 60 days, the president should present his ministerial list. So everyone is looking up to that. Why? Um, the ministers are a critical part of government. They oversee the functioning and administration of the ministries. And of course, there is also the uh, departments and agencies. So the director generals do similar work in those, in those uh, MDAs, as, as they are called in short. Um, so the president leads with a vision. Yeah. The ministers are like his foot soldiers. They drive the initiatives and you know, they are very much involved in policy making, in decision making, and implementation of whatever the president has in mind. He has to provide the framework and then his ministers run with it. What am I explaining all of this? Uh, this is to say that whoever he picks is important. It's a very important task actually for him. Whatever he achieves during his tenure is heavily based on who he picks as ministers. Given the current uh, condition of the country, people want to see a president that is transformation transformational rather than transactional in the people that he picks. You want to pick people that are, you know, uh, that are driven, people that are ready to make the sacrifices, that, have, that can muster the courage to do the right thing when the occasion calls, uh, people that will work to get the country back on its feet. You don't just want to pick people to fill quota, maybe because you're rewarding them, uh, their party members, um, and they are unfit for office and they just go down there and, and, and say this is not a time to do that. Mm. This is not the time to experiment. We know the president is a very skilled politician from his history. So a lot is on his shoulders at this time. And so this, this list, there is a lot of anticipation. Uh, uh, on, on this I'm, try, I'm trying to imagine who, what's uh, you know the weight on the shoulder and uh, now you're speaking uh, I think the DSS also it looks like it's coming again into the picture and we're talking about the 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 list perhaps the list should be by now uh, names on the list should be by now known by some certain persons politicians because uh, they're meant to undergo some security screening I guess yes yeah they are meant to undergo the good security uh, uh, screening, uh, so they will be cleared. After that, their names are forwarded to the National Assembly. Um, they will be scrutinized and then approved. I hope that the scrutiny will be thorough. In the past, we have cases where, you know, you know, people were not really looked at, you know, in terms of their background and what they were capable of doing, and they just approved that, and that's that happens, and you know, that, you know it just happens. So, but the, the bulk of the work rests with the president again. Mm. Um, he, he needs to get this right because there is unimaginable hardship in this country now. So he, his food soldiers are very instrumental to the turnaround of the country, politically, economically, socially, and otherwise. So he must get it right. He cannot afford to fail on this one. And some have said also that uh, those, uh, you know, come with some baggage should be dropped from the list. Uh, because as you said, you, you don't want people coming on that uh, will be some foot drag, uh, you know, to the administration. Now paint for us a picture of uh, the 
the the, the kind of uh, personalities uh, and uh, the kind of resume, and now without calling names, now the kind of resume or personality and persona that should occupy s some of or some of these offices. So, according to the constitution, every state should be represented. That means every state should get a minister. Under those circumstances, sometimes you know presidents tend to pick whoever you know, to fill a quota, you know, and that is not good at all. So it shouldn't so, be about filling a quota? No, no, no. It's, it's not good for the country, especially now. We see what is happening all over. If the president wants to leave a legacy, if the president wants, wants to do well, he really needs to pick people that are ready to work. He needs to pick people that are smart, that are intelligent, that are competent, that are honest and sincere. You might be competent, but um, you're just looking for a position, um, you know, to fill space and to, just to have a name. It has to be people that are willing to make sacrifices because this is a time that calls for sacrifices for the country. So those people that are also ready to pull up their sleeves, pull up their sleeves and work. Because it's going to be a lot of work in the next four years, um, you know, given what is going on economically. Um, so this is what people will be expecting from this ministerial list that we have been waiting for. Because, because uh, I think you've just raised a very important uh, point here, uh, uh, Dr. Constance Ikoko, because one of the key concerns of many Nigerians will be people who understand the nuances, people who understand the urgency of what Nigeria is dealing with at this point in time. But again, does it also uh, bother you looking at the papers, seeing groups and, uh, you know, uh, geopolitical zones already speaking of uh, uh, those that they think should be appointed and those that shouldn't get the appointment of the president because uh, the politicking has been really, really going on until this moment. It's not to make suggestions. Oh. Everybody wants uh, someone from their backyard to make it to in a ministerial position. It's fine. At the end of the day, the box stops at the president's table. It is him that is the president. It is his name on that door. If he fails, it's his name there. If he, uh, if he does well for the country, it's also his name. So the credit goes to him. And that's why I said that on this particular issue, he cannot afford to make mistakes. You know, when he was governor of Lagos State, people have always praised him for being able to spot talent and to give them the free hand and the free will to do what they need to do, you know, to, to run and, you know, run with initiatives. I think now as president, people are also expecting to see that same quality of him. The only thing is that, you know, there is the concern of whether he still have, has that presence of mind as when he was governor back in Lagos State many years ago. Would there be scuffle and struggle within the inner caucus of the president uh, for people to sneak in their own person? Or does, is the, will the president put his feet down and say, you know what, Nigeria matters at this time. Nigeria is more important at this time, so we have to pick people that will do the work. We're going to see in a few days the list is out and we'll see what he's able to pick. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari, after six months, he picked the same people. You know, you don't want people who have been there forever. Give an opportunity and chance to younger people who are competent and can also do the job. There are people that are career politicians, have been uh, circling the political space and the, you know, the presidency space for a, a very long time. You want to see some new faces that have new ideas and that are, you know, interested in really doing the work. So that's what we want to see. And again, it's a fine place to say many thanks for being such a nice company, Dr. Constance Ikoku. And uh, that's uh, it on tonight's edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. It's goodbye and thanks for watching.